What's up, team? Chuck with Traders War Room. I'm back at you with another video. This is your midweek sit rep, and I got a great video for you. What I need you to do right now is hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And I need you to come along with us on the journey and check the description tab out. Tons of tools and tidbits and hyperlinks to everything Traders War Room right there at your fingertips. Now, if that sounds good and you're ready to rock it with me, then all I got to say to you is follow me. Let's go to war together. Traders War Room, let's get it. Welcome back team. Legal disclaimer, this is not financial advice. The content is for entertainment and education purposes only. You're responsible for every decision you make. We want you to have fun, use caution, always go to war. Some services we provide, I'm not gonna beat this up. I got the promotions at the end of the video, but what I want you to take away from this is come check out and explore everything we offer at traderswarroom.com. Stay tuned, like I just said at the end of the video for hot TWR products and services and upcoming classes all in an effort so that you can grow, learn, share, and hopefully make some money. So trades of the day, guys. We had a fantastic day today. Had an Amazon trade, that's $165 per contract. Went ahead and closed out all of our runners on Microsoft for $340 per contract. And right there, the big one of today, Google, we went ahead and secured for a total of $380 per contract. You feeling me? We don't get them all, but the ones we do make bank, y'all. So hopefully you guys come along for the journey. And these are just me. I have 25 others on my server doing their same thing, making money every day the market's open. So come and get some, join the Discord or the instant messaging alert platform. Bottom line, we're destroying the market no matter which direction it goes. We want you to come along with us in the journey. And we ask you, if you're ready for war, because Traders War Room is, let's go to war together. With that said, let's go ahead and get into it. So your market's close today. Market's green across the board, man. It was a fantastic close to the market today. Futures, about 50-50. You've got a little bit of red, looking for a little bit of downward pressure coming into market, going into tomorrow. And here's your top trending stocks. A lot of the big tickers over there, the ones that are high liquid, high cap, make a lot of volume, doing a lot of moving and shaking. So it should be an interesting market tomorrow. Here's a picture representation. You're seeing a lot of green across their healthcare. You saw a little bit of red and some financial sectors were definitely a little red as well. Here's your ETF images, the inverse ETFs were failing today. So I hope you guys were following the bullish ETFs because you wanna follow the money. Here's your top industries. Uh, utilities was the lagger, even though it was green, real estate was second. And your top one was technology and consumer services. And here's your calls versus puts. About 50-50 on the calls versus the puts, a little bit more to the call side, but we need to understand that tomorrow GDP numbers come. So a lot of people are going to look to secure at the bell, just like me, during that volatility, and we'll see how the market plays out tomorrow. Some hot stocks, guys. Here's your hot penny stocks. Remember, we like penny stocks because they're cheap and we can go in deep. And if they move, you know, five, 10 cents, we can make some pretty nice bank. And the penny stock market is starting to heat up. We also got some breakout stocks over here. A lot of these, a lot of these are penny stocks as well, but we have some other ones that are looking to break out. EMPH, a lot of these ones in the clean energy sector are looking pretty good right now. And we got some gap up stocks. Looking at a lot of these that are pushing uh, the envelope as the market was surging today, we saw a lot of gap ups in the markets. So definitely paying attention to those. A lot of these, a lot of times when they gap up, they can't hold that. It's a little bit too much too soon. And we can catch a nice cool down period off of the run to the top. Signals and activity. Here's some of your pattern signals. We like this because these give us an idea of what type of patterns are going on as far as looking at technical analysis. So take a look at this and see if any of these are tickers that you're interested in and try to look at the patterns and see if you can see the trend that's going on there. We got the top OI change. Definitely looking at this, especially the options trader, we gotta pay attention to the OI change and see where it's going bullish or bearish and what the difference is. We also got the average option leaders, of course, Tesla, Amazon, Apple, and Nvidia, AMD, the big boys are always at the top with their big averages. So we're definitely paying attention to those because they're liquid, they're mega cap, a lot of volume, and they like to move. And unusual activity, seeing a lot of activity over there in Tevia with their negative news that they had. We're also seeing uh, some uh, unusual activity inside the semiconductor area. So definitely paying attention to that as we move forward. 
Top story, the Fed jacks rates again. Powell vows no surrender in inflation battle. The key thing here that made the market go so bullish from what analysts were saying is that they were kind of saying that we're not in a recession. We don't see the recession yet. Um, I got a feeling because we went with 0.75 uh, points on the inflation. If we would have got the term recession, we would uh, we would have seen a downfall in the market. Now, understanding that the government will not tell us that we're in a true recession until usually three to six months after we're already for sure in a recession. A lot of analysts believe us to be in a recession right now. So we're definitely taking that into consideration and always making sure we're ready to react no matter which direction the market goes. Next one, Asian shares, bonds find some relief in the Fed messaging. So Asian shares made cautious gains on Thursday as investors scented a possible slowdown of the pace of U.S. rate hikes, lowering bond yields and restraining the dollar. So we're definitely paying attention to the Asian market and seeing how that plays out over here on the U.S. And the top story, the U.S. Senate passes bill to boost chip manufacturing, compete with China. So the U.S. Senate on Wednesday passed sweeping legislation to subsidize the domestic semiconductor industry, hoping to boost companies as they compete with China and alleviate the persistent shortage that has affected everything from cars, weapons, washing machines, and video games. And just so that you got some, we got some of the best performing semiconductors right here. And then on the left, we, or on the right, we got some of the worst performing semiconductors. So always staying pretty, uh, pretty in the know with this particular industry as it's a hot industry right now, especially with this CHIP Act. So stocks, what looks good moving forward? All right, well, we got our earnings. This was a big week of earnings. A lot of money was being made and stuff. We got some big ones still coming up to close out the week. So we're definitely not done with it yet. Hot ETF check. So SPY, let's talk about SPY real quick. It had a huge push from the Fed FOMC minutes. And again, I think this is bullish. We'll wear off as we're hitting that high level again. And we're probably going to come down with um, a little bit of a news. The GDP numbers tomorrow will be a real tell sign of where we truly stand with the SPY. Now we're looking to potentially break out of this bubble right here. But being cautious and, uh, you know, cautiously bullish. I want to make sure that I'm prepared on the downside as well. So I'm still bullish until we can hold this level above where we're at currently and hold it um, more than just a couple days or a nice push to the upside. So I'm still bearish on SPY currently at this time. XLK, this ran with SPY. Of course, this is technology of ETF and it, it comes down to my opinion with SPY. I think we're gonna see the 136 and from the numbers tomorrow, the GDP and potentially some earnings that may miss or slip closing off the week. I think XLK will run with SPY, but I do think it comes down, so I'm bearish on this as well. And the and SMH, so this is a semiconductor ETF. I think we're looking for a potential breakout due to the chip act. Cautiously bullish on this, and we'll follow the SPY in the broader market. But sometimes these semiconductors have been known to run on their own, so fueled by AMD moving, NVDA moving, Intel, and a, a few other ones that are high, that have a higher market cap and are pretty liquid. So we're definitely paying attention to this as we potentially could break out on this particular sector and go up to a potential shelf of a previous area where we've noticed we had some supply and demand um, type of thing. The supply zone is a little bit further up from where we're at currently. Going into the stocks, so Apple, something is telling me that they are gonna fail on earnings. I don't know what it is. I'm a bull on Apple long-term, but I think that they're gonna fall. You know, people thought Walmart was, you know, immune to, you know, the inflation stuff and Walmart, you know, missed on the earnings and they fell as well. I think Apple's gonna do that in the market. Well, it'll rock the market and rock investor sentiment. It could be the catalyst to push and start pushing the market back to, you know, some lower lows. EMPH, I'm liking this for a breakout and it could be too much too soon. However, I think if it cools down, we can catch it on a downward trend just a little bit and it's prepping to push even higher where it stabilizes. So I am bullish on this. Ford had great earnings thinking we're looking for a breakout. However, be cautious with this because Ford does like to pull back after break breakout, but we do have levels at the 13.5, the 14, and even in the 15s where we can see some consolidation. Our next supply zone is up there about $14, so we're definitely looking for a push towards that zone before we start to see a rejection and cool down. On 50-50 on Meta, this is gonna follow the broader market. Terrible earnings on the market were strong, 
uh, meta will be strong, the market's weak, meta's going to be weak, so 50-50, and have triggers at the top and the bottom so that you can execute trades going both calls and puts and following where the momentum is going with meta. Plug, looking good for continuation to the upside. I think this push is towards 18. I like this for a push. I think it cooled down a lot the past uh, few days, and this was a nice push, and I think we can continue up and go towards 18, and uh, maybe even a little further if we get the volume that we need. QCOM pulled back in after hours, but I'm seeing this potential off of tomorrow at the bell, so I'm still bullish on this one. Also, it's one of the semiconductor uh, chip type of stocks, and that, those are really trending hard right now. So I do think that we could potentially see a breakout on this one pulling into tomorrow. I have a gap down on some negative news and probably goes lower from here, but this is one of my favorite long-term high potential stocks, and especially at this price does nothing to go ahead and grab some shares and just hold this long term. So I do think that this, once they get out of the legal issues that they have and they can really finalize that Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease type of, you know, technology that they have, I think that these guys will be primed to go ahead and start pushing back to the upside. TDOC dumped on earnings, but I think we'll see a jump from the bottom on this one, but I'm still bearish on it just because of the negative news that surrounds it. So I don't think it's there quite yet. And I think we see a little bit more cool down coming down on TDOC. So that's it with the charts. Let's go ahead and go into the pro perspective. Today, I want to talk about securing, get your money. That's the big thing. And we're dropping them knowledge bombs. You know how we roll. Let's talk about it. So securing. If green, consider profit taking. Now, this is one of the hardest things because this has discipline. Uh, a lot of people, when they're green and they're, you know, only five, maybe ten percent green, they they're wanting to go for more, right? And they don't quite understand how to read the charts because they're newer investors, or they don't know the moving averages and how they work with price action and how they work with the candlesticks and just the indicators and stuff like that. So they usually fail and they'll wait for these 50, you know, to 100% gains and they'll end up losing the money on a sharp reversal because they'll get spooked and they'll pop out. So definitely, if you're green, always consider profit taking. Have an exit plan for every entry plan you get into. If you get into a trade, I want you to have an exit plan, you know, set up some type of rule that you have, like, you know, if I'm down 10% or if the moving average is crossed to the downside and my candles are closing below on a five minute chart, something like that, you gotta have a plan and you gotta have an exit plan for every entry that you get into. Having rules, we were just talking about that for every trade, no BS levels where you secure or you exit, okay? Having rules that keep you consistent, okay? Discipline and consistency pay over time, just remember that. Multiple contracts, I want you to secure when you're up in intervals. You know, one of my things that I have is for every $25, I like to secure. So if I get into 20 contracts, if I'm up at 25 bucks, I'm securing at least, you know, 10, 20% of my uh, my full position. And I'm going in intervals. And then I'm adjusting my stop losses, the next one, riding waves on the way up. So that's, you always stay green. So you're adjusting your stop loss as you're riding up, you move it just up above break even, and you keep pushing it further and further up as you're riding the stock. It's a risk-free way of always staying green in your trade. And I want to mention, you know, scared money doesn't make money. However, we need to be cautious and we always have to protect our capital. So just understand that it is true. Scared money don't make money. And, you know, to the spoils of war, go to the bold. But we need to be cautious and we need to protect the capital at all costs. And that's it, team. I want you to invest in yourself in 2022. I hope you do that with Traders War Room. I want you to quit wasting that money that's not making money. And I want you to definitely come over and check us out at Traders War Room on the Discord, on the instant message alerts, on the website. Do something, but get yourself over there and start joining the team. With that said, that's the video. Stop unless you want to know what type of fire we're going about to bring you. And as always, let's go to war. Hot new upcoming products and services. We want you to grow, learn, and share, and hopefully make some money with Traders War Room. On 7 August, we have how to use price actions for directional day and swing trading. This is a formal class that we're going to do on our Zoom platform. It'll cost you $15 to get your seat. You get to keep the recording, and we're going to teach you what price action is, how to find direction for your trades, and entering and exiting for profit off of the price action. A fantastic class, especially in this current market, because price action is determining the direction of the trades and how it moves. But definitely something every trader should know. And we got you covered 7 August. Hope to see you there.
you register today and build your battle plan with TWRTradersWorldroom.com upcoming classes. Services we provide, man, we got free and paid services. We got the real-time buy and sell alerts, live trading, bell to bell, every day the market's open, one-on-one -on -one mentoring, trading classes, fantastic community, truly something for everyone and every type of trader. We got 25 real-time alerting analysts and AI trading bots on the platform, dials, all kinds. We got stock, option, crypto, forks. We even got sports betting up there. Long, short, day, swing spread, leaps, you name it, we have it. Like I said, something for everyone, every style, every budget. Come get them. One-on-one -on -one mentoring. If you want to develop skills, gain confidence, receive guidance, refine strategies, get a pro perspective, or explore new plans of attack, we got you covered. Book your session today, and every person that books a session, you get the recording so that you have a tool and a reference for later down the road. The whole idea is just to be better prepared today than we were yesterday, and we find that doing these one-on-one -on -one mentoring really help assist and fine-tune individual traders and investors and get them jump started into consistent profitability. Instant messaging platform, less noise, just alerts. If you're overwhelmed with the platform that you're on right now, getting, you know, kind of mixed up with the alerts and stuff, try your instant messaging platform, okay? Straight alerts right to the right to the message, like a text message, and we're giving you that fire, man. So definitely come check it out and it's live. You can see the link right there. It's the bottom link on the page. Check it out, and if it makes sense to you, hope we'll see you over there on that platform. And we talked about the TWR classes, man. We got both upcoming and historical classes. We want you to check out what we have available. If it's not the upcoming class, we have tons of repository inventory on the website. You go there, you purchase your class, you watch it right from the website, just like on YouTube. And our motto is every battle needs a plan. We hope you build your greatest war room classes. So check out what we have in store we truly got something for everybody over there and at the end of the day again we just want you to quit wasting money it doesn't make money we want you to invest in yourself we hope you do that with traders war room 